Something that I really enjoy doing are those how much cooling do you need for XYZ CPU videos. The idea is so simple, just smash a CPU into a system, find out the absolute max power that it can draw during boost, at stock settings, without any overclocking of course, then set it to run at exactly that speed permanently and try different coolers from our CPU cooler reference list and find the exact moment at which a cooler can start handling it. And this is really cool because without testing like a hundred coolers we can somewhat approach the range of coolers which are suitable. I think it's a quick and easy way of doing things while it's still somewhat accurate. We did it for the 13600K which was fine, we did it for the 13700K which was not that fine, but then we started doing it for the 13900K. Oh my god, oh my god. So at boost, our 3900K was keeping up with those advertised 5.8 GHz on the P cores and 4.3 on the E cores. All good. However, I was not prepared to see that this thing can draw a full 380 watts. What the actual hell did Intel think here? But before we continue, I am aware that a 3900K does not have to run at that high power draws. But this is actually what happens if I stock reset my goddamn board. So this is also what we are going as our minimum requirement. We will speak about the issue and, and, and all of that later on, but for now, let's just do it the brutal way. Me being the good boy that I am, I did a shortened bottom-up approach it, and it was a complete mess. Everything was hitting 115 degrees C within milliseconds. Nope, no, nope, no, definitely not. Nope, no, 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 no. Just for a joke, I did really try out the Noctua NHD15 and I was sitting there prepared with my phone to get a, a time in seconds at which the cooler was hitting that 115 degrees C mark. Well, I, I wasn't quick enough. That thing just went through the roof and I couldn't even quickly enough like, like hit that damn button. Everything went through the roof. The closest thing to not explode was Arctic's Liquid Freezer 420, not 360, 420. And the results are still very far away from being good. 110 degrees C, that's like 5 degrees C before my board will just shut it off. That's it. The only cooler that can handle the completely unleashed 3900K is the biggest. Oh no, let's let's stop clickbaiting here. No. Nope. Nope. And nope. Yeah, you are the only one which is left. So the only one capable of handling this freaking monster is this. And it wasn't able to do that in a way that I find very appropriate. And this then opened up the door of numerous issues I have with this platform. If you have a look around on YouTube, you will find so many videos exploring this issue and how unnecessary all of it really is. Because at the end of the day, that chip is supposed to run at somewhat around 250 watts. But my motherboard will allow it to run much, much higher. But it is not necessarily better. If you listen to pretty much anybody under the sun, you can either undervolt it or just limit the CPU's max power draw and you will get most 360 AIOs to run like fine. And while doing that, you will have very minimal impact on your performance, if any at all. But this series is not about optimizing your 3900K. One day we may or may not do a video about this, but this video is about max draw and what cooler is safe to be used with this freaking monster under all circumstances. Well, for a 3900K, it's this AIO. <laughs> it's yeah, it's 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 quite sad. It's this or multi-red setups, like custom water cooling, multi-red setups. That's really it. It's it's absolutely incredible for me, but that's just how it is. I don't think I'm even reaching that far out the window here. If I reset my ASRock Z790 Steel Legend that we used for all of Intel 13th gen, like these videos, we will have every boost option enabled. So if somebody gets this, like this combo, by default, the CPU will draw 380 watts. And this is probably most use cases out there. Not everybody is willing to put time and effort into reading up on this stuff and do all the stuff necessary in BIOS to get that number down. Most people will just get the stuff 
play a round of adult lego and watch the whole homemade wind turbine startup cause that little sucker will draw almost 400 rods it's it's I, i'm actually shocked sure it won't do it forever but it will try to do it for the first minute and while doing so it will hit them or throttle within that minute which is exactly the phenomenon we are trying to avoid in this video so that's just it for 20 AIO or really nothing else it's yeah the big joke about this is that the chip doesn't immediately become less powerful once it hits that thermal throttling point during the first minute the power draw just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller but the actual clock speed and then everything that comes behind that the performance overall will go down much further down the line and that just shows how utterly useless that amount of power really is all of that said if you are planning to get a 3900k two things please get the beefiest aio and the second please look into power limiting the chip there are so many excellent guides on how to do that and it's definitely worth it if you're doing only lighter workloads on it like let's say gaming you are not going to go that far it's going to be fine with a 360 with a basic 420 but as soon as you get into the heavy all core workload it's basically game over if you do not have some sort of limit on it on that note, not to bash anybody, but what the hell is that army of best CPU coolers for 3900K articles that recommend to get a Noxia NHD15S? No. Just no. Maybe if you want to power limit that thing down to a 13600K, but just don't. No. What, what the hell is this? It, in no shape or form will you ever get near promised performance with this thing. No, 13900K, 420 AIO or 360 if and only if you are willing to get into optimizing that thing at least a tiny bit or you are willing to put up with an AIO just ramping all the way up all the time and let the CPU decide for itself how it wants to be limited. But if you want to continue watching, have a look at our minimum cooler list on the 13700K. At least that one had something on the list. By the way, we also have a Discord server and it's filling up rather quickly. So if you want to join, the link is in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.